Goedendag allemaal, bonjour à tous. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a great pleasure to welcome you today at our first export talks with our guest, uh, Vincent Repay. Uh, it's, the first, um, it's the first export talks of a long series, as we will be, uh, we will be offering you 25 webinars until uh, June every Thursday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. We will try to cover as much topics as possible in a logical way to make you an expert in exports. Um, after today's, today's session, uh, when we will be uh, covering the export diagnosis, we will be covering the market selection, the sale networks, and the product adaptation and how to set the price for your international sale. Uh, before giving the floor to our uh, guest, Vincent Ripay, we will make a little poll of three questions. So normally you will have a message appearing on your screen. And the first question is, are you already uh, exporting or not? I think it works, great. Okay. Bit of time for those who haven't voted yet. Okay, 10 more seconds, then we will be closing the poll. Thank you. So we see that most of you uh, haven't been exporting yet. So it's good to see new clients for, for us. And I think this webinar will be very useful for you. Um, the second question uh, is uh, whether your company is providing service or exporting goods or both. So we know uh, a bit more about your company and what you are doing. Ten more seconds to vote. So we see that uh, both um, uh, majority of you are providing service. We have also some exporting goods, and uh, a lot of you are doing both. So it's very interesting for Vincent when he will be uh, doing its presentation. And finally, the third question, we are uh, interesting, interested by your markets of interest. Are you more willing to export uh, in bordering countries, in Europe, or uh, in other places? So the great export. Ten more seconds to vote. And so it's very uh, different. Some of you are interested by the bordering countries, most of you by Europe, but also for other countries. Um, these topics will be uh, covered in more details uh, next week, of course. 
uh, in a practical way, if you have a question, you have a question box on the right uh, of your screen. Just uh, type your question and uh, I will be uh, transferring the question to Vincent. Uh, we will start uh, soon for uh, about an hour and a half of presentation with a little break at 2 p.m. Thank you very much uh, for uh, being here today. And Vincent, you have now the floor. Thank you, Thomas. I um, make you, yes, so now you should be able to share your yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. That's Perfect. okay. Perfect. Okay. So good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you for Thomas for the presentation. So uh, we start now this webinar with just one moment with uh, this first seminar. So I'm Vincent Ripay. I have 30 years experience in international business. So mostly, let's say, for engineering company located at the time around Brussels. So meaning that I was in touch with very big projects but also with very small suppliers sometimes for whom I have to solve many things. So, um, so let's say if you, if you have any question and so on, do not hesitate to send it during the seminar. So better the first part to send it before two, like this I can discuss with a team during the break. And then after the one hour, and a half of presentation, then uh, we can discuss about all your questions and so on. So, um, let's say the official name is Diagnostic Export, but I have converted into Ready to Sell Abroad. You will discover why just after. So, selling abroad implies different realities. So, I speak generally about a Belgian company. If a Belgian company wants to sell abroad, she can do different things. Or she do goods that were own made. Let's say you produce yourself your goods. Or there are goods made in Belgium by over, or goods made by over in European Union, or even outside European Union, meaning that you are trading goods that you purchase somewhere else, but you have final clients. Some of you uh, in the in the small uh, um, three questions already answered to this. So goods can be associated with some services. So for example, if you need to install equipment at a foreign client premise, you can deal also with intellectual services. We will define uh, very deeply after intellectual services that's mostly consultancy, advisory and supervision, for example. You can deal also with what is called internationally, not in intellectual services, meaning that you install some, uh, some equipment that you repair, that you do maintenance, for example. And of course, that's very trendy in this COVID time, can be also some service or product online, meaning that you sell some services or goods online, or you perform uh, your activity on the line directly, for example, if you if you do uh, things relating to computer programs and so on. Uh, some people sometimes go directly to sell foreign, for example, on foreign trade fair. You know this. Uh, at this season, for example, outside the COVID period, normally lots of French companies come in Belgium to sell wine and so on. So that's what I mean by foreign trade fair. So you sell directly your product to clients on your stand in the foreign fair. And finally, normally that's not small company, but I don't know 
who are the people coming from. So there are some turnkey projects, so meaning that you have to build something foreign or you have to deliver some equipment in, installed on site abroad. When I say on site, that can be an hospital, that can be a factory, whatever. But the client is not purchasing material, he's purchasing equipment installed directly foreign. Some definition. So you see that Hub Brussels speak about export. And export, if you look into the dictionary, it's selling or delivering national, product, uh, national products abroad. Reality is more complex than this. And of course, a company, a business has to comply with legal and fiscal rules. So what is it possible to do for a company in, uh, uh, let's say, operating from Belgium? They can do, that's not the subject of today, national operation. When I say B2B, that's business to business. When I say B2C, that's business to consumers, so for example, a shop. And this operation are subject to national VAT, meaning in Belgium, 21 person for most of the project, sometimes six person. If you intend to deliver goods in European Union outside Belgium, there is already something that changed in your company because if you sell B2B, meaning that you sell to an enterprise in the European Union outside Belgium, meaning that's a company with a VAT number in the foreign country of the European Union, you are doing what is called intracommunitary delivery, meaning that Inside European Union for goods, we don't speak anymore about export, we speak about intracommunitary delivery. Why is it important, all these things? That's because a company every month for every three months, it depends about the size of a company, has to fill some documents. And one of the most important documents is the VAT declaration. And in your VAT declaration, you have some national operation and you have operation in the European Union, you have operation outside the European Union. That's what I mean here. So, intracommunitary delivery applied to the goods. If you deliver goods outside the European Union, you are also allowed not to put the Belgian VAT in your invoice. Once again, if you deliver to a business, meaning a company or somebody with a VAT number, and it's called export. The difference between an export and an intracommunitary delivery, inside the European Union, we don't have any more customs control. Outside the European Union, or if you want to send goods outside European Union, you will have first uh, to do customs declaration to exit Belgium and European Union, meaning that if you deliver goods inside European Union, you will never have this topics. If you deliver outside European Union, you have this topics, so you have always to take care and to clearly understand if you are dealing inside the European Union, outside Belgium, of course, or if you are dealing outside the European Union. Regarding the services, some of who uh, you are interested for this, there are two categories of services. There are what is called intellectual services. That means that it's services that you do from Belgium or in the country of your client, but let's say that services like advisory, 
advisory, large uncertainty, a large expertise, and so on. If you do services that are not intellectual services, that means that you will perform some activities in the country of your client. For example, you do industrial cleaning, for example, in France, or you repair a machine in Luxembourg or in Germany and so on. Now, with the open border, it seems simple to do everything, but there are some rules, some mostly fiscal rules and social rules. So, meaning that you cannot go in another country of European Union without respecting some rules. Some rules that are coming from European Union, some rules that are coming from Belgium, but also from the foreign country. And we will go deeply in the next slide. First, before taking care of all this, if you want to sell abroad, you have to know yourself. You have to know yourself, meaning your company, your business. So first, who is your company? Uh, who are the shareholders of your company? Who are the founders of your company? That's one important thing, because when you go to foreign, if you want to sell something, people are interested to know where it's coming from your company, not only from your country, but also what is inside this company. Second important thing, people when they purchase from you, of course you are suppliers and you are always worried about, is my client able to pay me? But don't forget that if a client purchase for you something, that means that he needs this product. And if he needs this product, you want to be sure that if he give you an order, or if he sign a contract, you will be able to perform this. So meaning the financial data, that's your capital, that's your loans, your credit lines, and so on, but mostly your treasury. Let's say the money available inside your company. Is it enough what you have inside your company? as money to perform the contract, to perform the, the purchase order. Third thing, activity, meaning product or services. What are you doing? What are you specialized in? Meaning that when you go to a client, you need to identify clearly according to the country where you go and the type of client that you are dealing with which client is interested by which product. I give you a very uh, simple example. Uh, I'm in contact often with some transport company, we name it for Wilders. And of course, most of the company, you have some small boxes to send and so on. So that's like finally when, uh, when you send by post and so on. But most of the forwarder, what they show you is that they already do project with big, with big material, with big plane, with big ships, with unusual truck, heavy trucks and so on. But you are not interested in this. You will feel more comfortable if they speak about your problem of small parcels that you have to deliver. So that's what I mean. Your activity, you have to know it in order to present to your client in a very favorable way what interests your client. For new companies, and you are mostly, from what I heard, new companies with perhaps not a long history and so on, what is important for a client is your references. And of course, if your company has been created this year or last year, you don't have necessarily yet lots of order, lots of contract and so on. So meaning that perhaps the value of a company are the people inside your company. So 
what the key person inside your company have already done in the past, meaning what they are able to do, uh, which are their specialization and so on. I give you an example. I was two weeks ago in Bulgaria and I created a company there with a partner. People were not so keen that uh, somebody from Belgium, Luxembourg, came to them um, willing to be associated in their company. Well, but when I show them that in the past I already travel in Bulgaria and I already performed some contract for some of my clients in Bulgaria and that I know the system and so on, everybody become friendly and finally we had already a good start with that company after only two, three weeks. So that's very important if your company have not yet many orders or contracts to prepare CV, resume of a key person of a company with their own specific skill and experience. You want to go abroad, but the reality is not the same if you deal with Luxembourg, where they have for the whole country 600,000 habitants, or China, when you have one and a half billion habitants. So the size of the market is very different. So why you have to take care about your production capacity and so on? That's because if you start to invest in the prospection of a foreign market and by chance you succeed to sell, but when you receive the order, you are not able to do it, that's really a disaster. So before willing going abroad, you have clearly to define your production capacity. That means you have office, you have factory, you have some machine, you have some IT infrastructure, you have some tools, you have some, for example, some license also to do things. When I see license that can be specific to your product, but that can be also licensed, let's say, simply for your computers and so on. So, actually, let's say in Belgium, most of the company are working five days a week, maximum around eight hours per day. So now, perhaps, already with all what you are selling in Belgium or on your actual market, you are already full for over 40 hours. So meaning that if you want to develop the market, you have a problem. And this problem is what all you have to extend your office, your factory, by new machine, by new IT infrastructure, by new tools, or you decide that you work in two shift or three shift. Even more is possible sometimes because already that's possible to work on Saturday and Sunday, but of course not the same people. So you have to think about this. I give you an example typical Belgium. Uh, in the past, I was in contact with uh, chocolate makers and they were doing praline, of course, and they were in touch with Japan. And I had the same in industrial product as well. So Japanese are very reluctant, let's say, to give big orders and so on very quickly. So they test the product meaning that you send sample for free. And then after, they do a trial order. This trial order is not so big. Okay, you do it. And it's possible for you to do it. Then you receive what you are thinking, thinking is an order. In, in your opinion, that's an order because that's quite a, a big quantities of goods or of services to provide. And you are thinking, yes, that's really an order. But you never discuss with your client what was the capacity. And this order, you do it well. For you, it was an order. 
for the Japanese, that was a Saiyan trial. And this Saiyan trial is still new. So at the moment, they give you a very big order. And I can tell you in most of the area, that's impossible to deliver to them because that's too big. But fortunately for the chocolate maker, there is something very special. You buy pralines and so on only, let's say, during few periods during the year. And if you buy it in Belgium, and that's the interest of Belgian chocolate, that's fresh chocolate, meaning that you cannot keep for long. So what happened this for this? To supply the Belgian clients with the quantity they need in a short period, you have developed a very huge production capacity because you have to be able in some very few days to make what is needed for Christmas, New Year, for example. And this capacity, the rest of the year is not used. And then this Japanese client come. And of course, that was not impossible to, to do uh, all what they want because you have that capacity. You perhaps never think that you have this capacity, but you have it. So you have to take care about your product capacity. You want to sell abroad. And I just put three words. Knowing your product can be service also. You have to know your product, why? Because of course, you have to know what this is made from, how you do it, the type of your product, the size of your product, the weight of your products, is it easily uh, exportable, meaning that you, you can easily deliver foreign? I just give you an example for this Bulgarian company that we have created. We import, we will not import that thing, track on monetary delivery. We will receive boxes from Belgium. And we were very obsessed by uh, the cost of transportation. And finally, when we check, that was nothing because that was 10 euro for the quantity that we need. So really that was nothing. So the problem of transportation for our type of material and so on is not relevant. But for other goods, for example, even the same chocolates, if it's in summer, and you have to deliver where the climate is very warm, you cannot transport simply. You need to do with, uh, with fridges and so on, uh, to work with fridge and so on. So it will cost you more. So knowing your product is really something mandatory. And also sometimes you have some surprises because you have some components or you have some products inside uh, your product that are forbidden for rain or for which you need some authorization and so on. Do you want to sell abroad? You have a product, but you cannot be sure that your product fit the requirement of a client, but also is according the norm of a country and so on. So meaning that you have to develop inside your organization a research and development capacity. Of course, research and development, we are always thinking about very high level products and so on, but any product you need to do research on it, you need to do development on it. I can give you an example. I was working for an engineering company in the past, and they do very performing uh, equipments for depolluting uh, the air. 
for industry, power plants, and so on. And of course, the price was quite high. And there was a, there was a, a potential market that was Vietnam. And in Vietnam, they appreciate our product, but there is a problem. They are not ready to pay so much for the product. The, why? Because the norm in Vietnam are lower than in European Union. So, okay, our equipment was very good, but it was not needed in Vietnam. So, we had to do research and development, not to sophisticate our product, but to make it more simple in order that we can meet the price requirements from the client. Are you able to adapt your product? When I see product, that can be a service also. But here I speak mostly about product. So, and in the next seminar, I will drive you to this, how to obtain the information and so on. So, not each and every product that is available in Belgium can be freely delivered in a foreign country, because some country requires certification, for example. Once again, an example. Once again, with a chocolate that everybody can understand very easily. If you want to export chocolate to Japan, and you start to visit clients and so on, things are running well. But there is a big problem in Japan. That's when the product is imported, the chocolate is imported. We just um, can, that's not systematic, but can check. If your product is HACCP certified, meaning that's the highest categories in the food industry, and most of the small Belgian chocolate producer are not HACCP. So if you want to sell your chocolates in Japan, before going there, before prospection, you have to make your organization, your company, HACCP certified. Second thing, still with the product, the labeling requirements. Labeling requirements, Everybody knows this. You go to the supermarket and so on. You don't even take care about this. But there is something special. And I take Belgium, that's not an export market, but you will easily understand what you wish to have foreign. You know your own country, and perhaps you never have a look to the label that is a fix on product in Belgium. So the rules in Belgium for a product to be sold for consumer purpose, it has to be labeled in two languages to be sold everywhere in Belgium. And these two languages are French and Dutch. Very special because there are three languages in Belgium, German also. So if your product is labeled French, and Dutch. You can sell it in the whole Belgium, including in, Ger in German language territories. If your product is only uh, labeled in French, most of the people are thinking that they can sold in Wallonia and in Brussels. No, because Brussels is a bilingual territory. So it's mandatory that all the products for consumers sold in Brussels are labeled in French and Dutch. And so the Dutch is only for product in Flanders. So if product is only labeled in Dutch, it's in Flanders. And I give you an example for this that you will understand for next seminar. If you are familiar with Flanders, uh, there are some let's say, supermarket coming from the Netherlands, 
that are only present in Flanders. Their name, for example, that's Albert Heijn. Why they are only present in Belgium in, in Flanders? Because they don't have to change uh, their labeling. It's good like this. If they go to Brussels or if they go to Wallonia, they have to change their labeling. So they don't want to do it. So meaning that if you go in a foreign market, can be close to Belgium and can be far, you have to rethink, re-engineering your product, your services to be able to, to sell on foreign markets. That means that the size of your product, the, the packing of your product, the transport of your product, the compatibility with IT systems and so on, eh, to be adapted. Once again, an example, spa water, for example, the biggest market of spa water is the Netherlands. But in the Netherlands, when you have finished to uh, the water from the plastic bottles, you cannot throw away in a blue bag. In the Netherlands, there is a system where you give back to the supermarket your empty bottle and you receive back 25 cents, meaning that on the main market of spa, it is not Belgium, that's the Netherlands, they have to organize a system of collection of empty um, bottles. Of course, if you are dealing in Belgium, never you have integrated this cost in your product, but you go in another country, you have other rules. Are your human resources fit with a foreign market? So, first, are you able to speak the language common, but also specific to the product, specific to, to your product, to your services, with your client? In most of the time, English is not sufficient. I tell you, I come back from Bulgaria, lots of things you have to do in Bulgaria. So if you don't have in your organization somebody able to speak the language of a country, I experiment this, this in Vietnam also, but I experiment this also in Bosnia. Meaning that in Bosnia, when I was in touch with a client, nobody understand English, they understand German. So if you don't have somebody who speak at least German in your company, that is difficult to enter this this market, of course, for my product, that was public kind. So meaning that, of course, English is mandatory to do foreign business, but it's not enough. Sometimes you need some people able to speak the language of the country and the specific language of your products. So I give you an example. My wife was dealing in Vietnam with electrostatic precipitator, in French, precipitator electrostatic. Even in French, if I'm not in that area, I don't know what is the product. So imagine that my wife is origin Vietnamese. Imagine how somebody Vietnamese can explain to somebody in Vietnam what is that product. Of course, somebody that's to explain to her in her own language. Second thing, and of course there will be seminar next year dealing with this as well. Are you able to understand the cultural environment of your target market? That's not the same to deal as, let's say, French talking people with German or Swiss people, even Luxembourgian people, than to deal with Spanish or Italian. So imagine the difference that you can face between a Chinese, uh, an Argentinian, and so on. So you have to be sure that inside your company, 
some people are fit with the culture of the different countries. From my side, for example, since I'm working, I'm in contact with Asia, and that's not a big problem for me. I have some origin in Eastern Europe, so that's not also a problem for me. But I have more problem with some other culture. So uh, I was never in contact in the past with Africa and so on. So when I had to deal first time with some African people and so on, it was not so easy. Even if you are familiar of international business, you need a time and you need to see if you are able to deal with the people. Human resources again for knowledge of international operation, what we, dis what we start to discuss today. You don't need only people to present your product to clients and so on. You need some people to manage everything from the packaging to the delivery, just some smarter logistics and so on. Are you able to do this with your product inside your organization? Or are you able to find third parties for waters, carriers and so on that are able to help you? Um, if I can just tell you something, more you are small, and more that's difficult to find people to help you because of course a small company does not have the same potential as a big company and so of course everybody is running about business and if i have as a third party one hour to spend to somebody who will give me lots of order or one hour to a new small company and so on. Most of the time, the choice is clear. They will run for whom is able to give them the biggest order. So take care. You have really inside your company uh, to have people that are really able to manage all this. Financial capacities. Does financial capacities fit for foreign market development? Meaning, do you have a treasury able to absorb the cost of prospection and investment to extend your activities foreign? If you don't have any cash inside your company, when I say cash, that's money on the bank account of the company. How can you develop your company for it? Of course, second point, you can mobilize external resources that can be financial support, for example, from Hub Brussels. But also, don't forget, the banks are made for this. And normally, if uh, for a company, the right way to find a way of financing is to find a banker who will follow them in their, in their project and so on. So this has to be prepared and you need also some human resource able to manage it. If your activity is linked with foreign public clients, meaning that you sell to public bodies, can be an hospital, can be an administration, can be a ministry and so on, most of the time, they require when they launch an offer, a tender, they can require that you give some bank guarantees to secure your commitments. And this guarantee, most of the time, it's already at the beginning when you submit an offer, meaning that you need some bid bonds. When we go foreign, of course, it's also used in the European Union, but for example, all the people that are dealing with Morocco, for example, they know the system. You want to go in Morocco, you want to, to sell to state or to public enterprise, you need to put some bid bank. That means that, means that the bank guarantee issued by your banker to secure your obligation 
if you have a contract. So, of course, all this has to be discussed with financial partners, meaning banks. Do you have also financial partners that can help you to validate political and commercial risk? So, that's called credit insurance. So, in Brussels, we have various credit insurers, but there is a, a state public insurer. Uh, credit, state public credit insurer that is called Credendo, we will discuss next time, and or payment method, that means that also the credit insurer are linked with this. You can have some factors, meaning some people, when you have some clients and they approve this client, once you issue your, your, your invoice, they will give you immediately the money and then they claim to the client. And banks, because there is an international payment method that is called letter of credit. So letter of credit, that uh, payment secure by banks, let's say. And if you succeed to have this on five spot market, it's always better. But with the COVID crisis and the problems of company around Europe, we can see perhaps next year even a letter of credit inside the European Union. So people have to be ready to deal with, uh, with this kind of payment method. No, that's not really a diagnostic. That's what you have to comply if you go for it. And this, most of the company, that they go to see clients, they go to sell products, services, and so on. They already give price and so on. And one day they discover that there are some rules. And of course, comply with the rules costs some money. So let's say, no, we will see around all the rules that you have to follow. And most of the rules for most of the companies that's inside the European Union. So European Union is, let's say, the origin of most of our regulation. And one you want to uh, to do this you have to take care to the free movement there are four types of free movement free movement of persons meaning you and me we can travel all around the 27 members we will discuss the next slide there are free movement of goods there are free movement of services there are free movement of capital, meaning payment, bank account, and so on. Free movement, of course, except in COVID time, but you want to go in the Netherlands, you want to go in France, in Germany, and so on. You don't even see borders. You don't stop at the border. So you can think that there are no obligations, that there are no constraints. Take care for a company when you are involved in foreign market inside your new European Union. You have obligation constraint coming from the fiscal, the social, and more generally the legal rules to comply as well in Belgium as well in the country where you sell your product or your services. Finally, for this introduction for European Union, you have to know that European Union is also a single custom territory, meaning that in the world, except European Union, you have one country, you have one custom territory. So, for example, perhaps you know that there is a free trade agreement between Canada US and Mexico, they are still there, free customs territory, meaning that you have to go through borders between the free countries. 
I speak for you as well as for people. In the European Union, and I speak there only for you because I speak about customs, all the 27 members of the European Union are a single custom territory. So, first of a free movement, free movement of persons. And of course, you, you can think why I'm speaking about this, because you are a company and perhaps you will have to perform some work abroad and so on, not only to go selling, but perhaps to do things abroad for the project and so on. So free movement of persons in the European Union means that citizens from the 27 EU member can come and go across the European Union with their national ID. Take care, here I speak on any come and go, so working is specifically mentioned in the third point. European Union member state citizen can settle in another European Union country and keeping their right, meaning social security, unemployment indemnity, and so on. So this is not really our business for for now. Third point, working, meaning that each and every citizen of a European Union state member can freely work in another EU state member, but he has to comply with a national rule, meaning minimum salary, social security, labor condition of the country where he effectively works. So I think perhaps you already saw this or heard about this in Belgium. Lots of people are saying, oh, there are some Romanian workers that are coming in Belgium. And the rules are, uh, they work for very cheap and so on. It's forbidden for them to come. They are authorized to come. But as certain condition, the problem here in Belgium is that there are not so much control. If you want to do the same thing as happened in Belgium and some other EU state members, you will have lots of problems. And if somebody of you is interested by Switzerland, that's of course not a EU country, even if there is an association, but take care, Swiss authorities check everything. So if you do something in Switzerland not according to the rules, for sure you will have some problem. And that's valid in other country, even let's say when you have to travel, when uh, passport and visa are mandatory, of course they will uh, control more. For example, when I was traveling to India with business passport, when I uh, when I go through uh, the immigration office, they were always asking me where you go, for which company you are working in, which company you are working in India and so on. So it is mandatory for a company that will send employees abroad to understand that there is mandatory rules to comply. And these rules are from the European Union as well as national rules of a country where works is or are performed. Movement of goods, meaning that goods originating from inside the European Union, so harvested agricultural goods, extracted raw material assembled or made, as well as product imported from outside the European Union and imported after paying tax and so on by a company from the European Union, they can be freely delivered in another EU member state, provided that the uh, European Union rules so, for example, the CO marking from some category of product, if you look at your computer, you have a marking C, as well as national rules of a country of destination uh, are respected. 
So meaning that, okay, I have a product in Belgium, but I have to check if it can be delivered without any mandatory requirements from the country of destination. So therefore, for product project purchase at the end by private customers, don't forget what we already speak about labeling, must business be labeled in the language and delivered and sell foreign according to the rules of a country of final commercialization. Free movement of goods, don't forget as well, if you intend to do e-commerce, normally when you deliver to private clients, meaning not having VAT number foreign, you have to apply for a VAT number to the fiscal authorities of uh, the client customer member state, meaning that if I deliver goods in e-commerce to a private French client, I need at the name of my Belgian company to have a French VAT number. And so meaning that a Belgian company can have VAT registration number in each and every EU member state if it's required by their activities. Free movement of services. I already speak about this. So let's say a Belgian company can do intellectual services. So I give you the example, consultant, advisor, uh, expert, and so on. You don't have any problem for that kind of services. You bill from your Belgian VAT number and you don't have to, to invoice Belgian VAT if you sell in B2B, business to business. If you do non-intellectual services, meaning that you will be present with your employees, your workers, or with your equipment in a foreign country inside your European Union to perform a contract, then you need to be registered with a VAT number in the country of your client. But as well, you could be subject to social security to income tax for the activities that you realize in the country of your client. Still one thing before the break, free movement of capital, meaning that inside the European Union, each enterprise, company, private person can freely receive and send payments, can have bank accounts in other EU uh, member states, but of course they have to comply with the rule of the European Union, with their state of residency and the country where they have their accounts. So I give you simply an example, different things. If you do uh, works in Poland, you need a VAT Polish number, and there is a route in Poland where you need to pay in Sloty the VAT and the tax to the Polish state. And this can be only done from a Polish bank. So meaning that your company will need a Polish account. Uh, in Belgium, we are used that we can send money like we want. I just come back from Bulgaria 10 days ago. If a payment exceeds 15,000 euro, you need to fill some documents at the bank before sending the money. So that was for the free movement, for free movements inside the European Union. We do a short break and then after, let's say, we continue. Thomas? Yes, Thomas? sorry, sorry, my microphone was off. 
Uh, yes, no, so we, we make a little break of uh, five minutes and then we okay. can come back. Non, mais ça se passe bien. Tu as déjà reçu des questions, Thomas euh, Oui, je t'ai euh, forwardé une question dans le, dans le chat. Attends, Thomas, okay, est-ce que je vois moi le chat Normalement, sur la, sur la droite de ton écran, tu as un chat. C'est la droite. Sinon, je peux te la transférer par mail. Attends, attends, je vais dire, je vais dire. Ah, chatté, voilà. Ouais, ça va. Et comment est-ce qu'on leur répond à ça en oral euh, Oui. Ok. Et on les voit ou on ne les voit pas Non, malheureusement, non. Ok. okay. Ben donc, euh, en commençant les questions-réponses, euh, je répondrai à celle-là.
Okay, we will start again. Okay, thanks. Uh, Vincent, you have uh, one question from uh, one uh, spectators. Yes. Um, so so I, 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 you read the question or I do it? Yes, I can, I can yes. Um, there is one interim agreement establishing a framework for an economic partnership agreement between the Eastern and Southern Africa states on the one part and the European community and its member states. Are those countries part of the intra communitary delivery? Answer is no. So, when there are agreements between European Union and some other country, like all the countries of uh, bordering the Mediterranean, but also with Vietnam, but also with South Korea, but also with Singapore, we are speaking about free trade agreement, meaning that it's still export, that's still import, you are not in the single market. So meaning that there are some preferences for products from this country to enter some of a product of this country to enter in European without custom duties or reduce some custom, reduce custom duty and opposite for the country between uh, when the goods are exported from the European Union, they enter this country with preference. In the next seminar, so uh, uh, already the fourth seminar, I will give tools how to know all this. So I Thank continue you. my... Just uh, another question from, from uh, Joaquim Bras de Oliveira. We are asking if we can cover a little bit more of administrative part, like procurement, and what kind of are needed for Europe and outside Europe. And I think it will be part of a next seminar on yes. uh, intra communitary uh, uh, export, so no yes. problem, and the PowerPoint will be sent to you after the presentation. And so, so you let's can, say today you can we are mostly focused on all the rules, fiscal rules, and so on that a company from Belgium, meaning a company in Brussels region, has to comply in order to be ready to sell abroad either in European Union or outside European Union. So let's say from my experience, when I teach to students, not to companies, but even companies, they don't understand either. Most of the people are always thinking that you go through European Union without any border controls for the people meaning for the persons. European Union, free movement of person, does not mean that there is no control between the country of European Union. Meaning I was in Bulgaria 10 days ago. To accept Bulgaria, I was controlled uh, by the border officer to accept Bulgaria when I entered in Germany. After my flight, I was controlled. So European Union, you can freely cross the border, but that's not because of European Union that you don't have any more control at the border for the person. The goods travel in European Union without border controls, but the people, that's not because of European Union that you don't have control at the, uh, at the border inside European Union. You don't have any more control in some countries of the European Union because of the Schengen Agreement. And what is the Schengen Agreement? That's an agreement between some countries of the European Union and some countries that are not part of the European Union, namely Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, and Switzerland. What does it mean that inside the uh, Schengen Space Agreement there are no internal systematic border controls? So meaning that's an agreement 
between country that cancel the systematic control border between the country that are member of the Schengen Space Agreement. Once again, I repeat that all the countries of the European Union are not member of Schengen, but some country outside the European Union, namely Switzerland Ireland, are in Schengen. So, for example, just take an example. I send the truck to Romania. And if you leave Belgium, the first external border of Schengen is Hungary, meaning that when you exit Hungary to enter in Romania, you have a border control to leave Hungary and to enter Romania. For what is it for? For the paper, for the idea of the truck driver. Now I change country. You go in Switzerland. We are in Schengen. So you don't have to stop at the border for the person. But as you are carrying goods, you have to stop at the border to exit France or Germany, for example, and to enter Switzerland because you have to custom clear the goods. So meaning that European Union, everybody is thinking that we cross the border without control. That's not correct. For the goods, yes. For the person, no. And in Schengen area, it concerns only the people. But take care, Schengen area does not mean that you can freely go to work in a Schengen country. If the Schengen country is not a country of European Union, there are some specific rules who apply. So to go working in Switzerland, for example, that's a specific rules, not the EU rules. So European Union, I already told that the custom single territory meaning that the European Union is not a free trade agreement about its member. The European Union is an economical and monetary union, implying that all its members are foreseen one day to have euro as common currency. There was only one country who can, if they want, not adopt, adopt the, the euro, that's Denmark. Furthermore, EU is a single custom territory, as I mentioned, meaning that all EU members are considered as an interior internal market, meaning that there is no custom issue inside the European Union. So buying and selling inside the European Union is considered as intracommunitary trade buying and selling outside European Union as external trade. External trade, that means that if you buy from outside European Union, you do an import. If you sell outside European Union, you do an export. If it's at the level of European Union, if you sell, you do an intracommunitary delivery for goods. If you buy, you do an intracommunitary uh, acquisition. So important when you start, and when you start with goods outside European Union. So when exporting, I speak well about outside the territory of European Union, a company must comply with custom rules from the country of export and fill custom paperwork, meaning that if you deliver, if you export goods to China, the first time that the goods met the custom are not in China, that's in Belgium, when they are ready to leave. So to enable this, a company willing to export goods must first convert 
It's Belgian VAT number, what is called numéro d'entreprise in French, company number, in an EORI number. And this EORI number will allow EU member state company to do export, but also import. So you need to do this. So if you have already an existing company, you can go to the first link, you type your VAT number, numéro d'entreprise in French, and you can control if it's already EORI. If it's not EORI, then you have the second thing. You fill the formula and you send it to the, by email to the address mentioned, and you will receive a confirmation that your v Belgian VAT number has been converted to EORI. From that day, you can start to import and export from or to outside European Union. Uh, just for information, that's very simple to do, and sometimes we have in one day. So I was dealing for a company uh, some months ago. They send it, and uh, less than 24 hours they receive it. Sometimes it takes a little more time, but never more than one month. That's very easy for Belgian company. I was in operation in Germany to do the same. I have to present a file to uh, German customs with lots of questions and so on. So really, Belgium is a country very keen about international business, let's say, for all the customs issues. So in common language, exporting is selling outside national territory. So I think that you have already understood. Reality is more complex. So if I deal with the 26 other countries of European Union, we form a single custom territory. Therefore, between EU member states, I don't have any more border control for good. And therefore, no custom control inside the European Union. So a sales of good inside European Union, outside Belgium, is an intracommunitary delivery. A purchase of good inside European Union is called officially an intracommunitary acquisition. This language is the one that you find in the a VAT declaration that you have to do every month or every three months. Meaning that if ever you're thinking that you export to Italy, you don't fill correctly your VAT declaration. And you can have some problem because of this. You will see why after. So, selling your goods, goods means various VAT status. Selling goods between companies of different states involve. I have as a Belgian company to build Belgian VAT if another company in Belgium purchased to me. Of course, that's not anymore export or whatever. But sometimes you have a client a Belgian client who purchased to you and they say, ah, oh, yes, but don't put me VAT on the invoice. I export the goods. Only if you are sender of the goods on the custom document, you can do the exemption of VAT, meaning that you need to have a custom document at your name. If it's your client who has done it, you cannot exempt the client, the Belgian client, from VAT. You have to build the VAT. We speak B2B. If a foreign EU company purchase from you goods and you don't have a proof that it has been transported outside Belgium, you cannot exempt this company of the Belgian VAT, meaning that 
when we deal internationally, normally we never build the Belgian VAT. But always, if you do the exemption of Belgian VAT towards your clients, you need a proof. And the proof inside the European Union, as there is no more customs, that's a transport document. At your name, meaning the seller has to be the person in the transport document as expeditor, let's say. If you deal outside the European Union, if you have no proof of export, meaning a customs document, you cannot exempt of Belgian VAT, meaning that a US client buy to you some goods and he come to collect it and you are not, you don't have a customs document, you have to build Belgian VAT. If you don't do so, either in European Union, for European Union clients, or for outside European Union clients, what will come one day, the Belgian authorities will ask you to pay 21% VAT on most of the products, sometimes 6%. So you can do exoneration, exemption of VAT. If you are sold to a foreign EU company and you have a proof in hand of transportation outside Belgium, but inside the territory of the European Union. And this proof must be at your name as consignor. If, it's, if you build a company outside the European Union, you can exonerate VAT, exempt VAT, Belgian VAT to the sky and outside European Union only if you have in hand at your name an export document delivered by Belgian customs. Inside European Union, what you have to be able to do? Inside the European Union, there is no border control. The truck you come and go without much control. But anyway, let's say, if you are a supplier of goods, you need to know the infrastructure of your goods. I put you a link there. The infrastructure of the goods is what is called internationally as harmonized system number, meaning that each and every goods have a specific number. If you are inside the European Union, you have to be able to issue a packing list of the goods that you are delivering. So I give you an example. You have a euro palette and on it you put some cartons, so you have to be able to do a packing list describing you have that package, the package number one, that's a euro pilot. The dimension of a euro pilot, for example, 120 length, 80 width, and the highness. Uh, what is inside this pallet? So, for example, I have 10 cartons, and these 10 cartons contain, for example, chocolate or biscuits or whatever. And if possible, you give them the code of your product and then the net weight and the growth rate. As I deliver in European Union outside Belgium, I have also to be able to obtain a transport document at my name to prove the exemption of Belgium VAT. And finally, but of course, for most of you, that's not yet the case. I hope that it will be a case one day. If you exceed 1 million euro in sales inside European Union, outside Belgium, you have to fill an infrastructure declaration for your sales. If you exceed 1.5 million purchase, 
from other countries of European Union, once again, you have to fill this declaration for the acquisition. Sorry, I forget to translate this data. So, if you are exporting outside the European Union, first, we speak about outside the European Union, so you will have some border controls, customs control. So, as I already told, you must have a NEORI number in Belgium. We will develop all this in the next seminar, but you have to be in contact with a customs agent, a custom broker, located in the area of a place of departure of the goods. So, meaning that if your goods are, are leaving from Brussels, you need a customs agent somewhere in Brussels. So, for, for example, in Brussels, uh, most of them are are, let's say, along the canal and so on, they are still there, because in the past that was there, that there was lots of customs operation. Be able to issue a packing list, that's the same as I explained for inside European Union. Just one thing, I introduce some more technical aspects, and that's important that you understand this is in your company. So, if you deal with countries outside the European Union that have a free trade agreement with the European Union, you cannot pack together the goods from originating from the European Union and then from outside the European Union, because to custom clear at import, if they don't have the split of the goods that are European Union origin and so on, they the client cannot be exonerated from custom duties at import. So, from the beginning, when you start to pack something, of course, we will do it more deeply in the next seminar, but you have to take care about what are your products, how they will be transported, where they will be transported, but also if there is a free trade agreement with the European Union, you have to pack the goods from the European Union separately than the goods outside the European Union to give specific value from what is from the European Union and what is not from the European Union to obtain what is needed to enter in the client country without custom duties or with reduced custom duties. Inside the European Union, you have your goods ready. If you follow my advice, you do a packing list, you have a transport document and that's good. Here, for outside the European Union, you have to go to the customs and custom declaration are based on a commercial or a customs invoice, I will explain in next seminar all this. So, let's say in commercial invoice, meaning that you have the value of what you send, you have the details of your goods, and according to this, you receive an export document that enable you to uh, exempt Belgian VAT, and also with that custom export document, goods will be able to leave European Union, meaning that at the external border of European Union, which is a custom point uh, in a country exiting European Union, or a port or an airport, you, uh, your documents will be used to go through that external border. If possible, according to the rules, company has to be agreed by Belgian customs. That's an advice that I give to you. There is a, a specific system that's agreed plate of loading, lieu de chargement agréé in French, 
meaning that it's not so difficult to obtain if somebody is interested by the details I can advise, meaning that one, your warehouse have this certification, you can do your export clearance at the Belgian customs when goods are still inside your warehouse and if well, the custom want to inspect the goods before they leave, they will come to your warehouse. If you do otherwise, you have always to present the goods uh, in the customs area, meaning that the carrier has after loading in your warehouse to go to a custom point. What you have still to do for some goods, only some goods, and that's according to the HS code, so what I call also in Trastat code, that's the same. To let your goods being export, the custom can check if you have license, license is mostly for weapons, is mostly for military things, as well as nuclear things, as well as some dual use things. So, for example, I deal with uh, with a company who do uh, uh, import export of some uh, of some steel uh, in around Nivelle, and some of their steel they are dual use so they have always to require a narrow license in order that this good can be exported outside european union you can have also some sanitary certificate for example you want to deliver outside european union meat without without sanitary certificate you cannot do it and finally you have a phytosanitary certificate Meaning that, for example, for woods, for, for, for some other things, you need it. And that's always according to the HS code that you know if you have to present this. If your goods are going to a country with free trade agreement and that they are originating from European Union country, you must be able to prove the European Union origin. So there are some specific documents for this. And finally, goods are ready to leave your company. So you have to give the instruction to the customs agent broker to issue the export custom clearance declaration and to make it validate by the custom. That's electronically. But what is still physical, that some documents called your one or RTR that have to be presented physically at the custom to put stamp on it. It's with some country with free trade agreement with the European Union to allow the product to enter into the destination country without or with reduced custom duties. So this is the basic that a company needs to be able to do if goods are for outside European Union. Of course, things are more complicated this, than this, and we have to go deeply in this, but in the next coming seminars. I have still a slide in French, but I have to erase. Turnkey project. A company selling a turnkey project has to comply with all fiscal rules in the country of the client. Meaning that a turnkey project is one you do more to build something, to install something foreign. So meaning that in this case, your client is not interested to import the goods and so on, is just interested to receive the goods installed or the construction built. Meaning that in this case, you have as a company to be in front of the customs and fiscal authorities in the country of the client 
and do all the necessary action in order that your goods can enter the country of your client and then you can locally do your activities according to the rules of the, of the country. We are speaking about activity foreign. I don't speak about the people that go foreign for sales. This is not a problem, mostly, except in some country, business visa. I speak about you know, really people that from the company that will go working abroad. So if you send employees or workers foreign, as well in European Union, as well outside European Union, this means that you have to, you will be subject and you have to comply with the fiscal and social rules in the country of your client. Each of employee and worker must have 12 documents required. And don't forget to work abroad. That's not only an idea. If it's outside the European Union, that will need a passport. And in most of the time, that will be a passport with a business visa. So even if you can go in the US without a visa, except the star, but it's for tourist thing, if you want to go to the US to work, you have to apply for a business visa. And or in some country, a work permit. If you fail to do this, the company and also your employee or your worker will have lots of, can have lots of trouble. Each of the employee or worker performing during more than six months in a civil year in the country of a client could be subject to income tax and social security in the country of a client. I faced this one time in New Zealand. We sent a supervisor there. He stayed there during two years. It was in English. He paid all the taxes in, uh, in the UK. But one day, the fiscal authorities of New Zealand asked me the copy of, of the passport, of each page of the passport covering the time he was in New Zealand. And they wanted to collect uh, taxes on his income because he was staying more than six months per civil year inside New Zealand. So you have to take care about this if it's contract with a long duration with uh, your own personal abroad. And finally, even small companies sometimes, they participate to trade fair foreign. So if a company only show products in a European Union country without selling to private or professional client that take away from the fair. I don't mean that you register an order at the fair. I mean that really you sell on the fair. Uh, you don't sell on the fair. There are no special rules that will apply. If you sell on the fair, that's totally different. So first, once again, the same for European Union, you simply, outside European Union, you simply exhibit foreign, outside European Union. But there, as your goods are going outside European Union, and your goods, I don't mean goods that you will sell, that's, for example, your stand to present your, your, your product, and the product itself to be exhibited then you have to do a temporary export from Belgium. And if you will give on the fair sample brochure catalogs that you send from Belgium, you will have to export these goods. And in the country of a trade fair, you do the opposite. So you do a temporary export for your stand and your product to exhibit. And you have to pay taxes on the value of your brochure catalog samples that you will give to client on the trade fair. If goods are sold and take away 
from a trade fair outside European Union. That means that you have to custom clear for export in Belgium and import with payment of all the tax foreign in the country of the trade fair. And then you must register locally to fiscal authorities in order to collect VAT and to pay the VAT to uh, the fiscal authorities of a country of a trade fair. If it's inside European Union, as you are a European Union company, you will have to obtain a VAT number in the country of a trade fair and pay locally the VAT that you have collected. So that's all for today. If somebody has a, let's say, question individual or want to, to talk to me one day, you have all my data there that you will receive. So, of course, basically, at Brussels are the people that can help you. But if there are some very technical things and so on uh, that you are looking for, feel free to contact me. It will be always with pleasure. Just remind that it's, you were at a seminar of Hub Brussels that uh, I can see from where you know. It. So thanks a lot for your attention. And so now uh, I come back to Thomas and we will answer to, you, to your question. Yes, thank you, Vincent, for your presentation. If you have questions, feel free to ask them on the chat, and I will ask them to Vincent. If not, well, I'll... I'll give you... Um, I'll meet you uh, next week for our next session, our next export talk, and we will be talking about how to select your export markets. You see on the screen normally uh, the rest of the session for 2020. We will have uh, 20 more sessions next year, and we will cover uh, custom duty, logistics, uh, uh, marketing, uh, payments, uh, risk uh dealing with risk and so on so uh, thank you very much for your presence today i hope to see you again next um uh, next week uh, i will send you the link to register with the powerpoint and thank you and have a good afternoon tomorrow has starting to uh, also euh, je t'appelle. Ok, ça va. Toi, euh, oui.